Hello guys, this is Krynus here and today we're taking a look at world saved data. First we will create a new package in util, this we will call save data. Inside the package save data we want to create a new Java class, this will be named example save data and this class will extend world saved data. After we have extended the class, we need to implement two methods, load and save. Those will be responsible for saving and loading our data. After that is done, we can also auto-generate the constructor for the class. The constructor will take in a string and will only call the super with the string provided. After that we want to rename the parameters in the load and save method to nbt and nbt. Next we also want to have a name for our saved data and we want a public static final string that is called name and that will be equal to example mod dot mod id plus underscore example and finish it up with a semicolon. After that is done, we want to create a new constructor. So we want to have public example save data and inside we will just call this with the name we just created. Then go to the bottom of your class and we want to have a static class example storage object in there. This will be the object that actually holds the data we want to write and read to the disk. The objects will be stored inside a private static final list of example storage object. We will call this data. We only need one instance of that. So we will have it static so it's accessible from everywhere without even needing an instance. And this will be equal to a new array list. Now let's populate our example storage object with some random data that I just made up. This will be a private final int. We will call this random int. Also we will have a private final block pause and this will be named block pause. Last but not least we will have a private final UUID. This will be called ID. After we have added those variables, you can see they are underlined with red. That is completely fine. It means we haven't assigned a value to them in the constructor. We could now go ahead and construct our constructor by hand. But in IntelliJ, we can just hover over the variable and click add constructor parameters and it will actually create us a constructor that will take in the necessary parameters to construct the object. In this example storage object, we will also need two functions. The first one will be a public compound nbt deserialize. This will deserialize the data inside a compound nbt. If you want to read up on nbt, there will be a link in the description. So. Inside this function we will have a compound nbt named nbt. This will be equal to a new compound nbt. Then we want to put our data inside that. So we will have a nbt.putInt. The string, that is the name of it, will be random int, and the variable that will dictate the value will be the random int. We will do the same for the block pause, so we will have nbt.putLong, call this pause, and we will have the block pause.as long. And the last one will be the UUID. For this we can 
uh, go nbt.putuuid, the string name of it will be id and the value of it will be id. Finally, we want to return this nbt. The second function will serialize the object out of the data. So we will have a public static example storage object, serialize. This will take in compound nbt, nbt as the parameter. And in this function, we want to return a new example storage object with the inputs nbt.getInt, the random int from before blogpost.off nbt.getLongPos and lastly nbt.getUUID of the ID. Now let's get to the fun part, actually saving and loading our data. We will start with the save function. First, we want to create a variable of type compound nbt. We will call that save data, and this will be equal to a new compound nbt. After that, we will have a for loop. We will define a list iterator of example storage object we will call this iterator and it will be equal to data.listiterator. Then we will have a semicolon. Then we will have iterator.has next as our Boolean for loop condition. Another semicolon and nothing after that. Then we will open up the for loop. Inside the for loop, we will have a save data dot put. We will have a string called data plus iterator dot next index to distinguish the data from each other. Then we will have a comma. And for the actual value we want to put inside our save, we will have iterator dot next dot deserialize. After our data is inside the save data, we also need to add that to the nbt that is passed inside the save function. So we will have nbt.put, we will call this save data and the value we will putting is our created save data and in the end, we will return the nbt. After the save function is done, we will go to the load function. We will again have a compound nbt save data. This will be equal to nbt.getCompound of save data. So we're getting our data out of the nbt now. After that, we will have a for loop for int i is equal to zero, semicolon, save data dot contains data plus i, i plus plus. So this loop will run as long as there is more data to read and it will stop once all the data we have passed in is read. The only thing we need to do inside the for loop is data.add example storage object dot serialize save data dot get compound data plus i. After that the class is almost done. We can annotate some stuff with non null. That is absolutely not required. You can skip that step if you like. Next thing we want to do is to actually put data and get the data out again. So we will have a public static void put data. 
This will take in example storage object object and a server world world. We will define a variable example save data data that will be equal to world dot get data storage dot compute if absence example save data new and the second parameter will be example save data dot name. After that we will call data dot data dot add with the object and last we will have data dot set dirty. And also we need to correct a little mistake I made in the beginning. That is that the data list should be just private final, not static. Let's create another put data method with the parameters being the raw data. We will have a public static void put data. The method parameters will be int number block pos pos uuid uuid and server world world. In this we will just have one line of code. This will be example save data dot put data. It will take in a new example storage object with the number pos and uuid as the parameters. And last we will add the world. And that is the second put data method done. Now to create the method that will actually get us our data. We will have a public static example save data get data with the server world world and in this we want to return world dot get data storage dot get example save data new and the second parameter will be example save data dot name. Now we actually want to have a place where we want to call those static methods. In my case I will be using the example block from a previous tutorial. In this example block we will override the use method. That is the method that fires when we right click the block. We want to rename the world to world and the block pos to pos. In there we will delete the return line and instead write if world instance of server world. We want to call example save data dot put data with world dot get random dot next int. The second parameter will be the pos. Then we want to also rename the player entity to player so we can get the player's UUID as our final data for the object. And the last parameter will just be the world casted to a server world. After that we will just wanna return action result type dot success. Now we are done with the save functionality of our example save data. If you want to get the data somewhere to work with it, you can get the data from the world object. The data is saved per world, so different worlds will have different sets of data in them. If you want to access the data everywhere, you should put it on the overworld. If you want to have it specifically for a certain dimension, for example the nether or your own custom dimension, then you can just call put data on the example save data with the world you want the data to be created on. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more Minecraft Forge related content. Have a nice day.